We're at ILS at Warners Bay with Anton looking at a range of equipment today. We have ourselves here a mobility scooter. What model do we have? Sure, we have uh, one of the big beasts. This is the Pride Path Rider 140XL. Um, so definitely one of the bigger scooters out there, um, but has some really cool features. Um, obviously a really long range in 35 kilometer range, top speed of 15 kilometers per hour. Um, we've got that real powerful, obviously, motor because of the two 75 amp batteries. Um, and you've got a whole bunch of accessories that we can add on as well. Some nice adjustability in terms of um, your ability to, to um, slide forward and back and also a pivot to be able to have a safe transfer out. Um, yeah. Do we have backrest adjustability? We do, we do. We've yep. got a little bit of lumbar. We've yep. also got uh, recline. Yep. Um, Beautiful. Ability to extend move these yes yep you yep. can move our armrests out yep um and we've got a big safe working load of 180 kg so really for even our, our much bigger clients um we find big big wheels they're pneumatic wheels as well which provides a really nice ride um and robust suspension um on, on the front and back as well um for all those different types of terrain so really suited for the uh, heavy user or a user that's going um, long outdoors distances. long distances yeah. uh, it's really like their, their key key transport um, in, in a Maybe way like areas too that are a little bit more rugged in terms of not having well connected footpaths so you know if you live in a CBD and it's well connected and everywhere's footpaths well that's great but a lot of people in society um, their normal streets exiting the suburbs they're not well connected with footpaths, so having that ability to safely maybe go over grass, navigate different thresholds um, is really important for this size. So a lot of great features, Anton's just said, that clinically gets my mind thinking. Our occupational therapists in our team would always be looking at these pieces of equipment, mobility scooters for people with goals of increasing their independence in the community. This then forms a part of transport if they're living you know, within a 35, 30 kilometer radius of an area, um, then they've got an ability to um, be able to go to the shops. That high safe weight limit gives an ability to carry a lot of things as well, it's still within the safe working limits of um, the scooter. A lot of um, accessories that you've mentioned there, I know there's some accessories around canopies and, and weather, which is wonderful. Uh, especially if somebody's using this as their main mode of transport in and around their community. When an occupational therapist supports somebody to access a scooter, whether that's private purchase or through some sort of funding scheme like an aged care package or NDIS, we're looking at a robust suite of assessments because in essence this is a vehicle, you're navigating roads, you're navigating past people, children, um, out in shopping centres at speed uh, and we need to make sure that that's safe for the person and then safe for those around them. So we often look at liaising with the person's general practitioner, their doctor, to um, have a screen of any medical reasons that the scooter wouldn't be suitable. We then move on to a trial from an occupational therapist's point of view, being able to do everything from um, get onto and off the scooter, be able to operate it with all of its functions like lights and hazard lights and blinkers um, and horn, navigate speed, be able to check blind spots. We can see we've got a mirror here. So go through a checklist of almost like a driving assessment. Check the angle of the steering column as well. So a driving assessment in essence is what an occupational therapist will go through you know, three point turns, turning circles, reversing. Where is that person gonna house it at their home? Do they have um, undercover storage with PowerPoint access? Are they able to plug it in themselves? Do they need support to do that? So a detailed assessment, but luckily we're really good at doing those things and we checklist them out. 
make sure that they're not confrontational and something to be worried about. We take the time to educate people and train them if they need more time to get um, really good at driving these things. So everyone's got a different learning style. Some people can just hop on and they've had a background of operating machinery when they were younger and this is no problems and they don't need anything. This could be the first time someone's operated something. Maybe they never drove a vehicle and um, at 85 years old, it's the first time that they're going to operate. And that could be quite an anxious experience if they've never operated something like this. So we always just take that time to understand people's goals and then take them through that learning experience. Yeah, yeah. and it's so important, as Scott mentioned, the ability to in-home trial and, and trial in the environment um, and build that confidence. So that's something that we obviously provide as a service. Is we can bring the scooter out do a trial with the client, talk through the features, allow them to have a really good ride and build that confidence uh, both in the therapist and obviously the client that they're, um, they're going to be able to manage this and, and it's going to be a, a nice addition um, for them. So it's also, uh, we talked about the power, um, so 10 degree gradient um, max, which is quite significant. Yep. Um, and go <clears> uphill. Which will allow you to really navigate all those, those fun hills. Yep, wonderful. Um, anything to finish with? Not really, I think we've covered it all. I'll finish with the fact that it's just lovely at the end of that whole experience where somebody's ticked off and they get access to the scooter and they take that first photo of themselves sipping a coffee or something with friends for the first time in a while that, or just going shopping or going you know, into a community club where they've been wanting to go for a long time and they just haven't been able to do that independently. Um, especially at the time of field filming, sort of on the tail end, hopefully, of COVID. It's nice seeing people getting out and about again, and this is a wonderful way to do it. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.